Hello and welcome to a new episode. We will do some more testing and watch what happens in the aquarium. Today we will be talking about calcium and magnesium. Let's play the intro and here we go. So today we are talking about calcium and magnesium. We will discuss the optimum ranges for these values and what measures can be taken to correct them if our test falls outside of these recommended values. Since people always ask about which products can be used to correct values if something needs adjustment, I will show you the corresponding products by Tropic Marin which can be used as a countermeasure and of course link everything in the video description. Before we start to measure, I would like to give you a few hints. When doing water tests, always follow the description exactly and work cleanly. Only then will you get a correct and meaningful result. If a measured value deviates strongly, the test should be repeated to exclude measuring error. Also, make sure you have enough light, preferably daylight available. This is the only way to clearly read a test that displays the measurement results by color changes. This also applies to tests where the measurement result must be determined on a colored scale. A white background is also a good help to be able to read clearly. Also, certain optimal areas, just like in freshwater, depend on your stock. In this and in other videos, I will work with this small magnetic stir. It is quite practical so you save yourself the often described shaking in the description to mix the reagents. It is therefore a very good investment for someone who must test more often as I do. It is important to mention that the magnetic stir should be out during the color matching. It could lead to a color deviation and you might read it incorrectly on the color chart. Today's test kit is a little bit more involved than you are used to from water tests because here you don't dose a given amount of reagent like in the usual test but some liquids are dosed until a color change takes place. The reagent that is then still in the syringe is used in order to determine the actual measuring result with the help of a table. Errors often occur here because the syringe is drawn up and read off incorrectly. We will therefore discuss this test in detail and discuss exactly where and how to read the results. So our main focus in these tests is on these three syringes. You will notice that an air bubble will appear in the syringe when you put the tip on. This is completely normal or should be exactly the same as the air bubble does not need to be removed. In the small blue attachment tip, there is exactly the amount of liquid that corresponds to this small amount of air bubble. How exactly to read it, you can see immediately. Let's first discuss briefly why calcium and magnesium are so important in saltwater aquariums and at what values they should be kept. Calcium and magnesium are along with sodium, potassium, chloride, and sulfate the main components in natural seawater. Magnesium and especially calcium are important growth factors for calcifying organisms such as hard corals and coralline algae. Both elements form the basic substance of the calcareous skeleton. In addition, numerous Numerous biochemical processes involve magnesium and calcium. The decrease of the magnesium and calcium concentration by cellular metabolism on the one hand and by skeletal integration on the other hand requires regular control and possible replenishment of the two ions in seawater aquariums. In this way it is possible to guarantee optimal and natural living conditions for all living creatures and to avoid long-term damage. In natural seawater, the calcium content is 400 to 410 milligrams per liter, and the magnesium content is 1280 to 1320 milligrams per liter in a fixed ratio of 1 to 3.25 to each other. Due to chemical and biochemical interactions between calcium and magnesium, this concentration ratio should also be aimed for in saltwater aquariums. Before starting the test, the reagents in the bottles are of course shaken properly, and the glass cuvette or glass cuvettes are rinsed thoroughly with tap water and then several times with aquarium water. With the help of the dosing syringe, exactly 5 milliliters of aquarium water are now filled into the glass cuvette. Next, we need the syringe with the red print 
and the small blue syringe tip on the front. You take this now and draw up the syringe from the test reagent A up to the mark 20. This corresponds to half a milliliter, by the way. You can now see the air bubble that I just mentioned. This is completely normal and should be so. The air bubble, or rather the amount of air, now corresponds exactly to the amount of reagent in the blue syringe tip on the end. When you have done this, you can now add the complete syringe, or the complete contents, to your sample. Since I am using a, magnet a magnetic stirrer, I can save myself the trouble, but in your case you should close the glass cuvette and swirl it a bit so that everything is mixed properly. Next we need the test reagent B. By the way, this is a powder, so nothing liquid. And this small spoon. Now you mix the powder properly and then take a level spoon and put it into your cuvette with your test sample. The whole thing you will swirl and mix if you do not have a magnetic stirrer, and you will see that the sample now turns light blue. Finally, we need the test reagent C. Then you take the syringe with the black printing and draw up one milliliter of test reagent. This is almost the complete syringe and you can read off the black plunger in the syringe on the lower ring. Now what I mentioned at the beginning of the video and in other test videos is very important. That you have a white background so that you can see exactly when the color change we need is coming. Because we will go there now and with this syringe which contains test reagent C we will add reagent C drop by drop into our sample until our water sample turns from light blue to colorless again. To be able to follow this exactly, a white background is very helpful and you can place a reference sample, i.e. simply a curvette with a little tank water in it next to it. And you now drip drops of the test reagent into it until both water samples are no longer distinguishable and both are normally transparent and colorless again. And then your test is finished. So you will see, now that you have this color change, the sample is no longer light blue but colorless. You now have a remaining amount of reagent in your syringe and you use that to read off your calcium concentration in this table which you can see here. Okay, we have now determined our calcium value but now we also want to know what magnesium value we have in the saltwater aquarium. To do this, take the third syringe with the black printing, the one with the green plunger in the middle. So you cannot mix them up. So now it goes there. Take your test reagent D and draw up to the one milliliter mark again. You see the plunger is a little bit different, but you can read it after this green taper when the tip gets wider at the green ring. There, the reading is done, so it has to be one milliliter. Okay, now you go there and add about 0.4 milliliters of this test reagent D from your syringe to your water sample. And then you see that your water sample turns light blue again. And now the test runs exactly the same way as we just did with the calcium. You now add drops of the reagent D to the sample, which you still have in your syringe. If you do not have a magnetic stirrer, swirl the whole thing a little bit after each drop and keep doing this until the light blue color disappears and your sample becomes normally transparent and colorless again. So we come to the evaluation and see what our calcium level says. So as we have learned, as soon as a sample becomes colorless, the remaining amount of test reagent in the syringe is then read off. Remember where we read on the black edge of the plunger and with this amount you have you can then look up in your chart what your calcium level is. Well, in my case, I now have a value of 412 milligrams per liter, which is in itself quite good. Of course, we do the same thing when we determine the magnesium level. So when we have the color change from the light blue to colorless, we read off the syringe, the broad green markings, and with this amount, we can then look up in the table what magnesium level we have. In this case, I now have a value of 1240. So I could use an increase a little bit. The possibilities to adjust or change your calcium and magnesium levels are explained quite quickly. You can, if you are low on calcium or magnesium, use different means to increase these values individually or both. Or, if you have a value that is too high, lower it again with a partial water change. And with that, we have unfortunately already reached the end of the video. If you have more tips for me for moving my aquarium next week, please feel free to include them in your comments. 
So friends, that's it with the video about calcium and magnesium. I hope you enjoyed it, and I think some of you will find this test easier to understand, and you will understand what it is all about and how to do it. If I have helped with that, then very good. Otherwise, you can have a look at the video description. There you will find the links to not only the products you have seen or the tests, but also how to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. There you can follow me leave a like, send me a friend request, or whatever. And next week, I can announce this beautiful piece of jewelry will move into my apartment. I'm really scared, and I have never done this before. I'm curious what I will come up with. It would be cool if you are there, and yes, otherwise, I don't have much more to say, except we'll see you in the next video. Take care, and I'm out.